Hey everybody, it's Pluto, and welcome back to Splatoon 2. I think it's time to head back into the main uh, part of the game, Octa Canyon, and try to clear out some extra weapon stuff that we haven't done yet. There's still plenty of upgrades that we also haven't got yet, which I'd like to get, which we'll get along the way. But I'm probably going to do this a little bit similar to the way I did the Splatoon 3 story mode now, but maybe a little bit less doing everything, basically. But anyway, guess I should actually get started with the first level, so I'll do that. There shouldn't be that much to do in this first level, because it's fairly simple. I do like the way that the original, like, first two story modes feel. They feel very different to the uh, Octo Expansion and the Splatoon 3 story mode. And I like the way that they feel, so it's, it's nice to be back here. But it does feel a lot easier. <laughs> Also, something I'm probably going to want to do a bit of is going fast, because that's something that I enjoy doing in this. Is just going fast, getting good times for everything. And using curling bombs is definitely the way to go for that. New record. I can definitely do fast with different weapons, though. Roller's a bit slow, but it is good for combat when you're up close to the enemy, so... Charger is definitely good at long-range combat, but it's not great for getting around, so I'm definitely going to use curling bombs for this. Also, I just realized this level is actually in, like, oh my gosh, this level is actually used in the Octo Expansion, right? Not crazy, right? I'm pretty sure this is one of the Break the Targets levels that we did. That's actually really cool. I didn't realize that for some reason. I think I actually did realize that, but it didn't click for some reason. Half a charge is actually pretty good with a charger. And considering this isn't even upgraded yet, that's saying something, I guess. And using half a charge actually makes it better for getting around as well. Slightly faster record, but still a similar amount of time considering I was just trying to go fast with this weapon. Also, it's probably recommended to do this, like each weapon going through each level. Like, all at, not all at once, just going through the game with a different weapon each time we go through, but I'm just going to do it probably like this. I might change up the way that I do it, but I'm it's probably more focused for editing if I do it like this. Duelists are just so much fun for getting around and taking out enemies up close or further away. It's definitely the, one I'm, the weapon I'm going to probably do the best with. It's just good in and out of the ink to just have it feels so smooth and so like combat based and it's so good when you're going fast through these levels though you can basically just ignore the enemies except when you need to kill them like this point here that is a much better time with duelies oh my gosh two minutes is around the amount of time that you want to get through each level when trying to go quickly the Brillas are a good weapon for just fighting enemies, apparently. It feels kind of heavyweight though, in a way. I, I, I could argue that it's a heavyweight weapon, but it's... I wouldn't say it is though, for sure. It's not exactly slow, but... This, this particular Brilla type, like, requires a little bit of patience, I think. Just a little bit. Oh boy, Splatling. Forgot how much you need to kind of get good with this weapon. It's alright for combat, but it's a bit slow for times in this story mode, I guess. But it is good. Also, you can don't have to charge all the way, obviously. It'll make some things easier. But if you're trying to just get behind an enemy and shoot them quickly, it's not really that kind of weapon. Also, I'd recommend using the... Uh, what's it called? Curling bombs to explode those balloon fish things. It can kind of charge fairly quickly if you hold it down half of its main charge. Not to the full charge, just to the slight charge, I guess. Ignoring all the enemies is just easy. It's also good for just painting areas that you're going towards. 
It's another weapon that you kind of need to be patient with. Just a little bit slower, but that was still faster than some of the weapons that I did early on. But I wasn't actually going fast before. Now I'm actually getting into the rhythm of fast. Once you've played the story mode um, this, mu this much, you just go fast. You just ignore all the enemies and go fast. And it's very satisfying. Blast is very good for hitting around shields. It makes this section a little bit easier. It's also just strong if you actually hit your enemies. A little blast uh, at the end of its shot is just very helpful for hitting multiple things with a lot of power. It's actually pretty good for getting ahead of yourself and just going even faster and ignoring everything. I don't know what it is. It just seemed... I don't know. I think it's I think its range is actually decent enough that its blasts and stuff just helps for getting around. Now, a slosher. This is a very different thing. It's good for taking out enemies from above. It's also pretty decent at getting area covered in front of you so you can get moving. But it is good for just destroying everything in your path. This is definitely not a weapon you want to overlook. I might even need to try something like it in multiplayer battles again. You can also hit over shields if you do it right. Oh my gosh. Speed. I think it has a similar thing to the blaster where it actually has good coverage in front of you that you can actually just go fast. Just ignoring everything again. But it also is so good at combat at the same time. For like all the crowd control. And this first level is definitely crowd control. So the, the slosher is definitely the weapon I would use for this level if I was speedrunning it. Now brush is going to be interesting because I can move quickly without having to stop painting basically. And if I can get up close to my enemies, I should be able to do some decent damage as well. Range isn't really the brush's thing though, which is important to keep in mind. But speed and power are. And also, definitely ground coverage. Just overall. Although you need to definitely watch your ink consumption with this weapon. Because it uses ink so much for everything that it does. Straight through. Straight, straight through. This is where range really could be better. Well, there we go. It's a pretty good weapon, but it definitely suffers for its range. And now, the reward for completely doing all of the weapons for a single level. Thanks to your efforts, I've got all the data I needed need for this location. Try out different weapons in other areas and we'll be rolling in more data in no time. Here's a little something for helping me with my tests. Go get your reward, you earned it. We get a meal ticket. Or a food ticket, I don't know. To get from Krusty Sean in the... Lob, uh, the... The, the plaza, I guess. Not that it's incredibly helpful, but it was helpful when the game was new. Going through this again makes me like the different colored ink again. Like the different variations of ink is something I like. Like the sparkles or the like mixed texture. Even though the regular ink. Just having them all look different is something I like. It's definitely good to have some variation, but I think being able to choose what type of ink it is would be very beneficial. I forgot how much I enjoy going through this quickly. I've only gone through the story mode 100% once already, but it, it's been a while since I last did that, so I'm, I'm, I'm really enjoying this. Although I'm probably going to be saying, singing a different tune by the end, because there's a lot to get through. Also need to make sure I'm getting enough power eggs to uh, upgrade the weapons, because I'd like to get that done before the end. Especially because that's going to be very helpful for just getting through the levels. It seems like a pretty decent weapon for this level, having a charger, because you can hit stuff that's far away, you can get up the walls a little bit better. 
It's nice and precise. The long range is definitely good for this level. Well, there he goes. That's a shame for him. Although it's going to definitely slow me down. I think dualies are quite interesting for this so far. Because they can be fast, but you have to really use everything to your advantage to make it faster than just going through normally. Because you're a bit slow when you're just shooting or walking. So you have to really use a dodge roll to make some distance. You can also do like jumping out of the ink and spraying in front of you like I normally do in Splatoon 3 at this point, but yeah. It's definitely good for combat and coverage, which makes this section somewhat smooth if I can figure out where the enemy is. There it is. Going off the edge. Gonna lose time if I don't take it out. Also, keep in mind that you can dodge roll in midair. Somewhat. Slightly faster time. It would have been faster if I was a little bit more efficient with the dualies, though. Also, this is definitely going to take a long time because I'm already 35 minutes in. And I'm only a little bit into the second level. I think the Brel actually shoots multiple shots. And that's, like, that. that's kind of the point. But I think, actually, if you're at a far enough distance, it actually covers the wall well enough to actually get up it quickly. Which is actually quite helpful. It makes it a lot better for ink spreadage. I wouldn't say it's perfect for it, but it's still pretty good. If used correctly. I guess every weapon's good if you use it correctly. New record with umbrella. You need to be careful at the end there, because the sponges, when the balloons are exploding, the explosions can actually push you down a bit, I think. Or something. Something's pushing you down, if you go too quick there, at the end. The Splatling is actually a kind of an oddly reliable weapon for this level, because you can control how much of the sponge is actually being blown up, but also it's good for wall control, like, covering the walls as well, which is also really good. But again, it can be a little bit slow at times. And needs actual good charges to actually do stuff well enough. What? That was definitely on the platform. That was, that was on the platform. You can't argue with me, game. I mean, you can, but also... <laughs> don't want you to. Almost perfect. It's also got good range for hitting things far away if you need to activate them. Just keep an eye on the cursor to see what you can actually hit. That's such a satisfying sound to hear those balloons re-blowing up. It just seems faster to me to jump down that spot there. There's not much to say about the blaster in this level, but I, I, I struggle with it, so I don't know. It doesn't seem quite designed for the bl blaster in, in that level, but it works, and it's good for getting around. This blaster is really on its way to becoming my favorite single-player weapon. It's just good at everything it does, apparently. Just need to watch in consumption as well. So satisfying to just take out enemies like that. I never seem to get that section right for some reason. There's always one enemy just off the edge, or just that didn't die or something. You can also pop their balloons to try and, um, get them to fall faster, as well. Slosh is pretty good for that level, except I made a mistake and it's sad because now I don't have the time that I was hoping for. But it's fine. For some reason this uh, brush feels very slow at making the the sponges the, the full size. But it is good for covering walls as well. 
because I go up to a sponge, and I kind of go like that, but it just takes a second to actually go up full size. And at short range makes it difficult for hitting the balloons as well. Money ticket. Okay, brush the walls. I mean, what's the what's it called? Roll the roll walls. Just fling flinks off at the walls. This level feels a bit weird for this weapon because of its range. But it is good for actually just covering the ground and walls. 151, under a minute though. There's not really a faster way up this area here than just jumping. Oh, really? This weapon was going so well for just going quickly because of how you can just tap in front of you and it just creates a platform or spot to go through. I'm being a little bit risky with this weapon, which I probably shouldn't be. That's a better time. <laughs> wow. It was just good for inking in front of you so you can go fast. There's a lot of platforming there, which makes it kind of necessary because you can't rely on the curling bombs. There's definitely ways to make the dualies work for this level because you can just keep putting lines in front of you as you go. Don't even need to worry about the enemies at all, basically. But it's actually pretty decent and pretty good for speed, apparently. Brello is actually, oh yeah, the, the Brello is actually really good for the stair bit there at the beginning. Like really good. I would actually be su not, su I wouldn't be surprised if I get a better time with this. Unless I struggle with the enemies and platforming. Ah, my perfect time was there. If you can get that bit just there earlier, it really saves time. I really wish I could switch bombs mid-air. Well, that's not gonna help. How do I even get back up? Can I get back up? I think I have to go using these. That's a shame. This could have been a lot better if I was better, <laughs> basically. It has the potential for a good time if the person using it isn't making lots of mistakes. Getting that early is impressive. Do I think I'm gonna get the second one early? Maybe? Oh, I did. How? 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 What is this? What is this madness? This should not be possible. What is happening? This should not be possible with the Splatling. Oh my gosh. You can get all of the early timings with the Splatling. All of the early timings. You can skip waiting so much for some reason. Somehow. I don't even know how. I think it's because if you get through that first section with the... That one enemy, that... The Octocopter. If you can get past the Octocopter at the near the beginning, quickly enough, you can get all of the early timings. With a Splatling. And because this weapon is good for taking out enemies like that, from good range, it just worked. Well, okay then. Some of the- I thought these later weapons wouldn't be worth mentioning. But... For some reason... They- they- they just work. I don't know. I think it might just be because I'm getting better at the level each time I go through. But again, I- you get the octocopter section done quickly enough. And then you can kind of- if you do the... The bits with the... I don't know, the rolling... Washing things quickly enough, you can just get good times. Okay. Seriously. The slosh is definitely my new favorite weapon for the, the story mode. 
the single player. Just why, how, and why. That one was alright with the brush. I mean, I got the timings faster, but it was... I, I'd had some trouble near the end. Which means you could probably get a good time with the brush, but I... <laughs> I'm not good with the brush, so... XP ticket. I don't think the Octo Oven's gonna be very different with each weapon. Gotta say. I think it's gonna be fairly generic. It's just gonna take time. More than anything. I mean, the way that you use ink consumption with some of the weapons might matter more, but overall I don't think it's gonna be that different. You might be able to get some good times though with different weapons, I guess. Like that. And you definitely want to throw out a curling bomb after the end of the fight to get to the end quickly. Well, at least I can use the charge to get around somewhat quickly. Just need to hold down the button for a little bit longer than a tap. New record again. With the charger. That was rude. Dualies are just good. I had too much speed. <laughs> and now it's going the other way. Spotling seems like an odd weapon for bosses, especially if you need to climb up on them. But there's probably some good scenarios for it. And you can kind of spread your ink around as you're shooting it, so you can kind of figure out what the best strategy is. So it's interesting. It's so satisfying to hit the weak point with the blaster. Just need to watch ink consumption apparently. When using... What's it called? Curling bombs. I didn't think I would normally have that much trouble with it, but anyway. It just seemed a little bit slow before. I'm a master of this fight now. <laughs> I can turn him to cover the smallest area possible. With his own ink. Aww. Oh, I was really hoping for a better time with the slosher. It seemed like it was faster, but I guess it wasn't. Wow, he just destroyed the thing there. I didn't know he could do that, but that's really cool. Also, the brush is a bit slow for taking out the weak point. Just want to point that out. There we go. Coin ticket. Very nice. And there we go, that is the first hour and a half of all the weapons in the first, for the first world, in the story mode. But anyway, we have some power eggs now to spend, so I think I'm going to spend them on something. Apparently each of these have a different thing that increases when we upgrade them. Um, what do I need to upgrade? I guess I should probably upgrade the, the brush, although... I don't know, I think I should actually upgrade the hero shot. I don't think there's going to be any levels, maybe very few levels that I actually have to need the hero shot for. But I'm going to do it anyway, I'm going to also upgrade dualies as well. There's still plenty of upgrades left to go. And I guess upgrading is going to make the times for each weapon slightly different. But the way that they feel, I guess, will be roughly the same. I don't know. Turns out this is going to have an immediate payoff upgrading the hero weapon. It's now a lot more consistent, like it shoots rapidly basically. And it's just gonna be so powerful. It's such a- the, the main weapon is always super good <laughs> to have, so. And getting a good time with it depends on if you want to go for the good time or not, so. It's just so powerful to go up into the enemies and just take them out. You don't have to worry too much about being hit. You can just take them out in a couple of hits. So nice. The ultimate pushing weapon. 
Also, you can kind of just somehow ignore everything in this level. Somehow. And I mean, if you shoot back their stuff at them, it works really well, as well. I wasted a bit of time there, but... I mean, I could have had a much better time if I didn't. So let's see what I do with the other weapons. Charger is interesting for these enemies because you have to actually hit them. But it's still good for getting up walls and shooting out back the Rollinium. I, I, still, I still can't say that right, apparently. Rollinium. I think. Shouldn't be that hard to pronounce, but apparently it is. But it's just nice to have the charger to go f all the way through places on walls and on floors. And having curling bombs also definitely helps with propelling things into other things. I thought that was slower. Oh well. I mean, I, 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 they're, they're, I could definitely do a lot better on this level than I'm currently doing. Let's see how I go with toolies because that should be good. There are several weapons that I'm definitely a lot better with. Just skip everything, don't even need to worry about combat, basically. Even if I get hit, I should be fine, maybe. I say confidently before the end, but I mean, I got a good time considering I wasted all my armor. 141. This level is really not that different with different weapons. It's more of a sub-weapon level than a main weapon level. Also, how did I get 141 again with the Brella? I, I guess my, my statement, previous statement was correct. It's really not that different with different weapons. It's a sub-weapon level. The only difference is when you have to paint a wall, or take out the um, enemies that explode, you know, with the ones. And this bit here is also a little bit different. Big something to take out these enemies. But not, it's not crazy different. Once you make it to this section here, it's basically over. For time saving. A little bit slower with the... Uh, Splatling, though. Tried to be quick and it didn't work out. Tried to get an even faster time. I don't need a faster time. I've already got 141, so I don't know why I'm trying to go faster. I feel like a blaster could actually be good for getting a faster time, though, if you're not trying to do fancy stuff that doesn't actually work. You can ignore most enemies, but not all of them. It's interesting that they give you a piece of armor there. Makes it very possible to get through here without needing to worry about anything. Or if they knew that. Probably. I guess it wouldn't be a proper Splatoon 2 stage if I didn't mention how much I'm enjoying using the slosher. It's just so good. For some reason. Every time. Thank goodness for invincibility frames. Come on, 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 come on. I don't think I'm gonna get the better time because the timer goes while well, I'm in the air. New record, 141. It does keep track of milliseconds, so. But you know, I'll take the faster time. Doesn't actually show what the milliseconds are though. Short range, but it's alright. Still on pace. Barely. The good thing about the brush is if you make a mistake with uh, the curling bombs, you can kind of just use your brush as it's supposed to be used. Really? You've got to be kidding me. I mean, I wasn't going to get a good time anyway. Like, not, not a new good time. But still. It just sucks to get pushed off the edge, you know? Experience ticket. 
Okay, I get to use the hero shot again. So let's see how, if I can actually get a better time with it. It's nice that you can throw curling bombs into the start of the rails here. To activate them. Every time. Every time I make one mistake. If I'm gonna get the extra parigs, I have to take the risk of messing up. Even though I don't really need the parigs, I just keep going for them for some reason. I feel like this is one of those levels that you can get a really good time for if you go through it. I think this is one of my favorite stages for going fast in. It just feels very designed to go quickly through it. Two twenty-five. It's the record to beat. And I've already played through the stage with dualies, so that's that's gonna knock that out as an option for faster speeds, I guess. I think I remember what I was doing the first time I played this level, which is ridiculous because of how long ago that was at this point. I keep needing to adjust the controls because the motion control center point is just not the same as it was before. It's the thing that I have to adjust the most when I play Splatoon games. Gonna go for speed this time. 214, not quite sub two minutes, which is a difficult time to go for. I even skipped a lot of stuff to try and just go fast. Like ignoring the enemies, just ignoring everything, and I still didn't get a better time. I don't think it slows you down to switch rails. I don't think. I could be wrong, but I don't think it slows you down. This way is probably faster than the other way. As long as you do it right, taking the rail. It's just faster than swimming. One second faster, but I don't think it's possible to get two minutes. Under two minutes. I don't think it's possible. And again, I don't think the stage is very different with the different weapons. A lot of, a lot of this all comes down to curling bombs, basically. There's a few moments when you need to shoot the thing to activate it, but that's about it. Definitely don't want to miss that. Oh my goodness. All of the difference that could come from sub like the actual main weapons is skipped basically by trying to go fast and ignoring the enemies. 210 with umbrella. And I missed a few things, I think. Maybe a did I? I can't remember. Oh well, it was pretty smooth. I guess the the story mode's not really designed to be different with different weapons. Whereas the other modes in, in Splatoon 2 and 3 are designed to be used with different weapons. This was kind of a, a new thing, I guess. And it's more of a use the weapon that you like the most and just play through levels. It doesn't expect you to go play every level with every weapon, but it does reward you for doing so. Not that it really matters now, but it's still a thing. It might be actually better to jump off the rail at the very end without being in squid form. Because it flings you further. Which allows you to get to the next rail somewhat quickly. Somewhat. Depends on if you're going down or if you're just going to the next rail. Yeah, like that. That's, that's good stuff. 209 with a splatling. It's a pretty good weapon for that, to be honest. Just, you know, saving the milliseconds, but still.